would you like to introduce yourself to my people? Hello, my name is Kamasi Washington, tennis saxophone player, musician from LA, born and raised. Now you uh, got your education in one unified schools, right? Yes, um, I went to Sunny Port City School Elementary, right on Street from Lamar Park. Um, I went to uh, uh, Laces Junior High School, and then I went to Hamilton High School. Then I went to UCLA for uh, college. You weren't talking about that UCLA thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you came up during the time where a lot of young people were going in another musical direction. Uh, a lot of people were in the studio just doing beats, doing samples. Um, what made you gravitate to the jazz genre? Um, the expression. I mean, um, like I said, I grew up, you know, on Slawford and Wilton Place. Um, it was a lot of pressure and a lot of dark influence. And um, unlike a lot, of my, a lot of my friends, um, at a pretty early age, I found a way to express myself that allowed me to to release a lot of the feelings that were being impressed upon me instead of uh, internalizing them. And um, There's a freedom in jazz and, and, in, and in the higher, well, I should say higher, but in, in, the, um, in the more free music forms that allows you to, to release and to like, and to, 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 to cleanse yourself. Right? And, and as, a, as, a, as, a, as a young kid, it's like I, I immediately felt the difference, you know, all the anger and the frustration you have, you know, being where you are. When you, when you get that release, you immediately love it. Uh, you like feeling good. You like the feeling you have. It, and not only it doesn't, it doesn't not only, it doesn't only you know, um, it's not just the emotional release. There's an intellectual release too. You know, we um, we don't always get to use our minds the way that they can be used. And that ability to, to stretch your mind to that you know to that uh, to that limit, it's a good feeling as well. Now uh, I've seen you many times around Los Angeles. Brendan Heat, and uh, in some of those places, I remember Billy Higgins and Ron Muldrow and a lot of the veterans uh, of Lumber Park who have gone on to another place. Um, what do you see your influence to be today in Lumber Park, and what kind of legacy would you like to leave? Well, it's interesting that you say that because uh, it's it's a trip, like you know, it's. Most people are unaware of their mortality, you know. And like now, I meet young musicians, and they they tell me stuff like, "Oh, I grew up listening to you," and I'm like, "Huh?" And it's like I remember being that age and thinking the same thing about people that were my age at the same time. And it's like, okay, wow. So like, the things that I've done there, like they've already passed on. That they've already the, the, the exchange has already happened. Um, I like to think that I've um, I've showed them that like in this new era of music you can still be true and you don't have to you don't have to fall into the trap of you know being so dependent on electronics and all, and all that and those types of things even though I mean that is a part of music and life the world changes so you have to I mean I've had to change and I've not only accepted but embraced a lot of those things as well but I've also um, held on to the organic music like the music that's made 100% through, you know with people and and uh, earthly design devices. Now I've seen you on stage with a legend, Gerald Wilson. What has that experience been like, man? It's been incredible. He's a he's a great inspiration, um, and uh, in two ways. One, and in, um, in the fact that Gerald is probably the most honest person you ever meet. You know what I mean? Like if if you sound good, he tells you. You know, and like. And he, he speaks his mind. He you know, he likes what he likes and he like you know, and that's that's beautiful. He also he's the most driven person I've ever met. I mean, he turned ninety four and still to this day, every time I'm see Gerald, first thing he says is, Man, I got this new thing I'm writing and nobody never heard nothing like this before. And I'm like, Wow, I mean he's pushing at ninety four. And he's already had so many innovations in music. If he never wrote another piece of music 
he could he could have stopped writing music in 1980 and no one he'd been he'd have been you know in the history books but still you know 30 years later he's still pushing it 94 he's still writing he still wants to he still wants to go further he's still he's still searching and that just kind of like lets me know like man like that's the the beauty is the search you never really find it you just you get closer and closer to it but it's it's you're always searching and that and that's that's one of the biggest things that I, I mean like i mean aside from all the harmonic you know the 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 depth of harmony that you know, i've learned from playing with them but i mean the life life lesson i've learned is that you know you never stop to search now if you could speak to some of the young cats out there who are just picking up a horn or just learning the keys what kind of encouragement would you give them I would tell them that I mean, cause you know, it's, music is an interesting thing. It, it it can make you feel better than you ever felt, and it can make you feel worse. But perseverance. If you're gonna be a musician, it's gonna take per perseverance. It's just the reality of the music. It's the it's the nature of it. Like I said before, it, you never conquer music. You just continue. You never climb the mountain. You just you never get to the top of the mountain. You just keep climbing. Um, so I would just say that I mean, and I know now, cause when I was younger there was a disparity of young musicians. So there's probably even a greater disparity of musicians now, and it can feel like you're alone, but you're not. You know, there are other guys out there that, that have the same vision as you, and there's nothing like playing. Like, I have a friend, Miles Mosley, who, who always says, like, the, the, be, the, the biggest reason to, to learn how to play an instrument is to play with other people that have mastered their instrument. And it's like, um, there's nothing like playing with other musicians on a really high level. It's, it's like, it's euphoric. And when you get to that higher level, and you get to play with other musicians at the high level, you'll feel it, and you'll go, "Oh wow, it was worth it. all those hours, all the all, all the heartbreak, everything. It was all worth it because there's no feeling like that to connect with people on that high of a level." Now, is there one moment? Because I know as a photographer, there have been moments where I that was so special to me that really said I had achieved my craft, or I was I was advancing in my craft. Is there a moment where you took the stage and you looked out the audience and you said, "Yeah, this is why I did it." Uh, is there a moment? Um, Maybe it was in the airport where you had your ticket, or the first time you used your passport to go somewhere. Hmm. Um, let's see, um, my most defining moment. Uh, actually, uh, honestly, I mean, like one of, one of the one of the really great defining moments for me was the, um, the first year I played at the Central Avenue Jazz Festival. Um, I mean, I played plenty of jazz festivals. Plenty of I played in front of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in my life. Um, but that was the first time I got an opportunity to play with, like I said, my brothers and my music in front of. That was the first jazz festival that that a big jazz festival that that gave us a chance. And um, and the reception we got from the people, it was really it was really beautiful. It was like it it it, it made us all feel like. We were valid. We were just as valid as our heroes, you know, because we we look at our heroes and like sometimes you can get lost in how great they are and you forget that, you know, what you do is valid as well. Like I tell my friends all the time, I'm like, man, what you do is valid, and like your music is valid, and like who you are is valid. That's how I tell a lot of young cats too. It's like what you have to say, what you have to bring to the world, the world needs it. And sometimes, you know, you you play as in, as a as a professional musician, you 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 can get wrapped up into playing other people's music. And making their music sound good, and you forget, oh wow, my music is valid. And it was a, it was a great moment for us because it was, um, we'd always wondered, you know, like, you know, when we were going to get a chance to, to be ourselves. Now, I played with other people, and I played for other people, and I made their music great. But I never really got. That was the first opportunity I got to really present my music to the big army. Now I know I saw Snoop Dogg somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> How did that come about? Um, I played with a lot of hip, hip hop artists. Um, I, I started playing with Snoop, um, one of my best friends, uh, Terrace Martin. Um, he's a great saxophone player, and he um, he produces for Snoop. And um, Snoop is putting together a live band, and he went, you know, a horn section. And um, so we went on the road with Snoop for a good two years. And I learned a lot actually, um, because um, as a jazz musician, we get so wrapped up into these really complicated musical forms that are like they're really complicated there's a lot going on and um when you get to a music kind of like snoops where it's stripped down 
to something very, very um, to a, to to a core. It um it allows you to, to it forces you to take a a much more detailed look at every little thing you do, like phrasing and like you know, and, and not that that's not in jazz. It is in jazz, but a lot of people miss that in jazz. Um, because they haven't, you know, had a chance. You know, a lot of jazz musicians play blues and R and B and stuff like that as well. So it's kind of like you learn that from from the more stripped down music. It's like because um, in this music, there's only three notes. So of course you're not gonna play a wrong note. But it's did you play it with the exact right phrasing? And it's like nah. Then it's, then it was whack. <laughs> Whereas you know something a little more complicated, you can get away with not with with the little things, the little subtleties being missing. But then it takes when you take that that mentality back to something like jazz, and you add those subtleties with the complexities, it really creates something really cool. So what's it, what's coming out? What's coming? What's going to be coming out soon from you and your group? Um, I have a new album coming out. It's about eighty percent done. Uh, it's coming out on the Brain Feeder label. Um, it's going to be something really amazing. Um, the new band I'm playing with is basically like a it's a it's a it's a double trio. It's a triple trio, is what I call it, <laughs> because it's uh, it's it's like um, there's like a upright bass, a jazz kit, and a piano, um, a more fusion funk kit, electric bass, keyboards, and then three horns in the front. So it's like two basses, two drums, two keys, three horns, and a singer. Um, and it really wasn't the instrumentation that led me to have a group that big. It was the players. It was uh, there's the, we all we all grew up together and we had these interesting relationships with one another, and like uh, like Miles and Stephen have an interesting relationship just as people, and then when you put them together musically, even though they play they both play bass, they're coming from from completely different perspectives. So it's almost like they're never in the same place at the same time, even though they're playing the same instrument at the same time. Same thing with Ronald Bruner and Tony Austin. They're never in the same place because they don't. They don't approach music the same way. Same thing with Brandon Coleman and Cameron Graves. They both play piano, but they're never in the same place. And then the horns, we're actually always in the same place together, and it's cool because like we create like a third pack, that kind of, like the glue that kind of brings all that together. And it's we played we played a show actually recently at the Lombard Park Jazz Festival, and it was so special. I was I was like spinning for three or four days after it because it was just so amazing. This is actually the band that's going to be at at Lachman, so. Now, is that bad sister Yeah, Patrice Quinn. And she's like the she's like the icing on the cake, man. She's she has such a she has such an honest spirit, you know, and it's like it it's inspirational. I mean like she 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 she's influenced me greatly musically and just in the in the way she's always true to what's happening. Like you can put Patrice in any situation and she's just gonna find the truth in it and, and shine a light on it. That's our funny y'all at at Central Avenue and I say Oh yeah! Oh yeah! She's amazing. I, I, I heard Patrice. Um, I, I never forget when I, I, I met her, and she had told me like, yeah. I mean, um, and she was already growing up, you know. And she's like, yeah. I just started singing a little while ago. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, that's cool. Another new singer, you know. But man, when she opened her mouth, it was like my jaw dropped, and I was like, I, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Just the tone and just the just the way she tells stories. It's like she tells the story of the song. And that's what a great singer is to me, is a storyteller. Yeah. If you could have any vocalist front your group, alive or dead, who would that be? Trace Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> I can say this about every, every person in my band. Like, it's, it's a blessing because um, you know, my heroes, they, they, they traveled the world and, and all over the country looking for their bands. I wouldn't replace anyone in my band with anyone ever in history. I, I mean, it's, it, and it's not that that's not to to devalue it, you know, not, not to not to devalue our heroes because we we've all grown up listening to people and they're my heroes. But I have a connection with these players, and they're just as valid as my heroes. But we also have a connection. We grew up in the same world, so no, there's no one that I would replace. And any, every single per, player in my band is irreplaceable with me. I wouldn't replace any, any of them. Brother, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got to do this again. Yeah. Cool, man.